Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Systems Technology Part 2, Module 22. The last module we were talking about some probability uh, theory and we were trying to discuss um, how acceptance sampling can be linked up with the theory of probability etcetera. And we looked into the aspect of if supposing there are two pieces and we are inspecting them, uh, what are the chances that one of them will be defective <coughs> provided the overall percentage defective is about 8 percent or so. So, we tried to investigate all that. Today we will be talking a little differently, we will uh, actually talk about uh, mutually exclusive events. So, if two events A and B occur on a <coughs> particular experiment or a trial and uh, uh, further the occurrence of either one prevents the occurrence of the other, then the events A and B are called mutually exclusive. For example, let us say we were talking about the percentage defectives and we were talking about a defective piece. So, in two draws either there can be 0 defective or 1 or 2. Let us consider the one defective case. So, if there is a one defective case which is there in uh, such a uh, situation, then obviously uh, of, out of the two draws that you are making on this whole lot, if one is defective the other has to be good. Okay. So, therefore, they are mutually exclusive sets and uh, one of them would be definitely defective and another would be good depending on if the first draw is good, the other one should be defective or vice versa. So, these are all uh, so called uh, mutually exclusive in, in nature and uh, some if, if there is a defective which has occurred, obviously you are left with only a good occurrence. You cannot have a defective occurrence because that will uh, have the number of uh, defectives to be 2. Okay. So, for two such events P the probability of A plus probability of B is actually the total probability of A or B mutually exclusive events. We have seen this in the earlier example. For example, if uh, uh, 0.08 or about 8 percent is really the uh, amount of <coughs> the percentage defective of the population. So, in one draw what we were doing is either one defective which would be 0 0.08 times of one good which is 0 0.92 that is 0.736 and the other one if the first one is a good then the other one should be a defective mutually exclusive again that is how you obtain this. Okay. So, this is a very very good example of mutually exclusive events. Further if two events A and A complementary is certain to occur on a trial, but cannot simultaneously occur, then A and A complementary are known as the A complementary events. For any such pair of those events, supposing if there is a trial in which let us say the event A has occurred and you already know that uh, the event that A should not occur, that means the other events which are apart from A should occur, they are characterized by this A uh, dash here. So, the probability of A and probability of A dash combined together is most certain that either A should occur or other events which are there apart from A should occur. So, the total probability is 1 in that case. Okay. So, therefore, the way that A should occur is really 1 minus the probability of the complementary A that is A should not occur in that particular case. So, we have seen this example a single draw where P dash was given to be 0 0.08. So, if it is a one defective and one draw case uh, is 0 0.08. Now, uh, if it is one good in one draw case, then it should be one minus one uh, defective in one draw case that is 0 0.92. Okay. So, uh, the good uh, chances of 92 percent are exactly complementary to the defective chances of 8 percent in the particular acceptance sampling. So, <coughs> that is how you classify uh, some more laws of uh, probability. So, two events A and B are independent if the occurrence or non occurrence of A does not affect the probability of B occurring. So, in that event again you know let us say uh, if you talk about uh, some examples whenever a process produces defectives independently or at random. So, that the probability of a defective on the next piece uh, does not depend on what the preceding pieces were like. Then we have a case of independent events. Okay. Such a process is said to be in control uh, that is stable even though some non-conformity is produced. Let us uh, look at so uh, such a process really is uh, said to be in control. Unfortunately, all processes are not in control. For example, let us talk about a, a different situation where let us say we are producing uh, some uh, pistons, piston rings you know in an assembly line and there are about close to 3000 parts of piston rings which are being produced. So, uh, it may happen, it may so happen that because of a certain fault which is there in the system, the fault could be say let us say related to uh, stacks of mold. Uh, at a situation when the iron is not hot enough etcetera. And this was realized much later down the production 
when the production had already started. So, there may be bunching of defects. Okay. So, the first 100 may be defective to an extent of 25 percent that uh, let us say around 25 defectives came in the first 100 and then afterwards when the process goes on the remaining 2900 has only 4 defectives. Okay. So, therefore, uh, there is some kind of an exclusivity and independence of these two events to happen between the first lot and the second lot and it is really uh, a chance cause that uh, the process was detected at a certain point of time to be defective and then countermeasures taken because of which defects reduced. So, such uh, kind of uh, events then can uh, will have to be tackled independently or it has to be tackled probabilistically in an independent manner and whenever there is a, a set of events A and B which are independent of each other this coming of 25 defectives out of 100 or let us say 4 out of 2900 they are completely independent of each other okay, and the reasons are therein are completely different of each other. So, therefore, both A and B occurring should be actually the product of the probability of A and the probability of B. Let us now uh, talk about a second example uh, of probability when we uh, talk about the dependence and equal likelihood. Uh, uh, let us consider drawing without replacement from a lot of n equal to 6 speedometers out of which one is defective. Now, n is the number of pieces in one lot. In this case, uh, uh, the lot is of size n equal to 6 and uh, the number of defectives in lot is 1 in this case. So, 1 sixth should be the probability. right? So, we consider a very simple case which uh, we just draw a random sample of 1 from a lot of 6. So, random means that each of the 6 meters is equally likely to be chosen from the sample and the probability of each is about one sixth. So, there are two kinds of uh, speedometers one is a good one, one is a defective one and uh, you know in a such a lot where there are 6 pieces and one is defective obviously one sixth is the percentage defective and five sixth exactly is the percentage to be good speedometers. Okay. So, now you consider drawing a sample of uh, 2 from this lot of 6. So, you want to uh, draw 2 and uh, uh, you know the overall lot size is 6 and you have only one fifth or one sixth of the lot completely defective and five sixth is actually completely ok. So, what would be uh, the probability of getting a defective let us say or a uh, good let us say in this particular draw. So, out of the two uh, draws that you are making out of that 6 lot one of them could be defective similarly one of them could be good or both of them could be defective or both of them could be good. Okay. Both of them could be defective is not a case here because there is only one such defective in the lot. So, you have to eliminate that and uh, you are left with only uh, either both good or one defective one good. So, this is a case of two consecutive drawings which are not independent. So, take the first case of the sample yielding no defectives that is two good meters. So, obviously, the probability of two goods is basically the good at the first draw and good at the second draw. Assuming there are 5 such good pieces in the sample, the first draw the exact probability is 5 6, the second one is 4 5th because you have already drawn one. So, the number of goods have reduced to 4 and out of which you are drawing again and you should get exactly one of them. So, that is 5 6 into 4 5th which is actually 2 3rd. Okay. That is the probability of 2 good and if you wanted to do it for <laughs> let us say the defective. So, you should either have 1 6th into uh, 5 5th you know because one of the draws have already been executed if you had a bad or defective draw in the first uh, sample alternately we could also have 5 6 times of 1 5th you know both of them would typically. So, this is good at the first draw bad at the second draw. So, this would all result in 1 6 which is same as having a probability of 1 defective. Okay, so, that is how you basically do the uh, you can say dependent events given one condition you are doing the second given that you have drawn one good you are doing another one or uh, trying to draw another one. So, there has to be some dependence between earlier and later. So, these are completely different than the independent in the earlier uh, slide. So, uh, we can also count samples using uh, these permutations and combinations and this is just a review of what probably you have earlier knowledge about, but we want to see it in case of acceptance sampling which we will just about come in a few slides. So, in combinations we consider the example uh, for example, uh, that we have about n objects which we can distinguish uh, between clearly and uh, you know how many distinct samples each of one can we draw from a lot of a big size n equal to capital N equal to 10. Obviously, the answer is 10 so because you are drawing 
10 different samples they are all distinctly defined they are different from each other. So, you can draw 10 different samples obviously. So, we call this a combination of n objects taken one at a time and symbolization we write it at C n 1 and the C n 1 typically means n factorial by 1 factorial n minus 1 factorial and this results in n basically. Okay. So, n here was 10 for example, and you said exactly 10 draws are possible, because they are mutually exclusive and they are uh, completely you know uh, distinct objects, they are complete different completely different objects with respect to each other. So, next consider samples of 2 uh, from say 4 good pieces g 1, g 2, g 3 and g 4. Now, the number of distinct unordered samples may be uh, found from the number of distinct ordered samples. For example, for the ordered samples you can either have g 1, g 2 or g 2, g 1. Okay. So, these are essentially the same only thing is in the first draw in one case you are having g 1, in another case you are having g 2. Similarly, g 1, g 3, g 3, g 1, g 1, g 4, g 4, g 1, g 2, g 3, g 3, g 2. Similarly, g 2, g 4, g 4, g 2 and g 3, g 4, g 4, g 3. So, you do not have a precedence of what comes first in this particular case and you are basically arranging all the samples in a certain order or in a certain arrangement. Okay. So, but then essentially when you are drawing and you talk about unordered samples, you are essentially meaning the same when you are drawing g 2, g 4 and g 4, g 2. That means, in one case you are drawing g 4, but it is ahead of g 2, in another case g 4 comes later. So, if that order does not matter to us in the case of selection, then we represent it in a little bit different manner. And you can see here that if you are talking about just the representation of all these uh, ordered samples, there are essentially 12 such samples which are there, but if you are talking about the unordered samples, there are only 6 such samples which are there, okay, because you are repeating it just by changing the sequence of what comes first and what comes next. So, in one case that is the ordered sample and you are drawing 2 out of a lot size of 4. So, uh, C 4 2 would typically correspond to factorial 4 by 2 factorial 2 factorial and that. So, this is 4 into 3 by 2 which is actually equal to 6. Okay. So, this C 4 2 then therefore, represents the unordered samples and the order is not important in those samples. And the similar kind of a thing can be expressed through permutations. So, if we talk about permutation of 4 out of 2, you know we are talking about the ordered samples, where we talk about just 12, you know, which is actually these many sets which have been created in the process of the draw. So, now let us consider a lot of 10 distinct pieces, a number of possible ordered samples each of 2 uh, is 10 into 9 that is 90 because there are 10 choices for the first piece and having made a choice uh, it remains nice choice for the second piece obviously you get 10 into 9 so 90 ordered samples are there and exactly half this number is when you are having unordered that means the sequence is not important in which you are selecting that times you are having exactly 45 in this and this you can represent one through permutation so the ordered samples are always expressed through permutations and <laughs> the unordered samples are always expressed through combinations you already probably know this from your basic class 12 knowledge about how you know uh, a permutation can be n factorial by n factorial minus 1 and a combination can be n factorial uh, divided by 1 factorial and minus 1 factorial. So, having said that uh, this is a step towards counting of samples particularly when you talk about uh, acceptance sampling and uh, already I think I have described this uh, p n r is n factorial by n minus r factorial you can represent factorial either in this manner or in uh, the manner that was shown before. And uh, obviously, combination would be then n factorial by r factorial by n minus r factorial. And so, from this is very clear that how you have calculated the different ordered and unordered samples as I told in the last slide or discussed in the last slide. So, when we talk about inspecting or testing n pieces or n samples, we may search for defects or non conformances in the n pieces and record the total number of such defects. This is uh, measuring quality by a count of defects. In inspecting or testing of n pieces, we may consider each of the n pieces, which uh, may not contain any defects. So, they are all good pieces or uh, maybe the pieces which are actually defective. So, each piece having one or more defects is called a defective. Okay. The uh, measure of the uh, count of such uh, pieces are known as the count of the defectives. Okay. 
So, we will cons consistently use the following symbols here uh, probably and also in later discussions then n is the number of units in a sample, d is the number of defective units in a sample of n units. So, basically d by n is the fraction defective and then you can re represent that by the term q uh, sorry p which is the sample of fraction defectives or proportion of the defectives in the uh, sample. And then you also represent q uh, equals 1 minus p that is the sample fraction good. So, if there are exactly d defectives obviously n minus d are the good ones and so n minus d as a percentage of n is basically the q value which is the sample fraction good. And uh, when you talk about the number of defective units you are basically multiplying just n by n times of p to obtain the number of defective units. So, basically you have defined the acceptance percentage in a manner that if you have an idea of the initial sample size from which you are actually drawing a lot size from which you are actually drawing just multiplying the fraction defective with respect to that lot size would give you the number of defectives exactly and similarly number of goods also. Okay. So, suppose we had a process with population uh, which had a fraction defective of 10 percent that means out of 100 10 are defective and for a sample size of 4 there could be either you know 0 defective or 1 defective or 2 or 3 or even 4 defectives which can exist. We can simply represent this process by looking at the various probabilities let us say for 4 good pieces or 0 defective pieces you have exactly uh, 0.9. So, therefore, 90 percent of the goods are completely defect free. So, 0 0.9 to the power of 4 that is 6561 uh, about two third of the time we draw a sample of n equal to 4 pieces from the process all 4 will be good ones. Now, next we seek p 3 good defectives 3 good and 1 defective. So, this could either be the first one good, second one good, third one good and the fourth draw defective or the first one, second one both good and then the third draw defective and the fourth one good. Again first one good, second one defective and third and fourth both defect uh, good, good pieces so on so forth. And so, we can actually multiply the uh, probabilities because they are all sort of independent of each other. If the draws are not consecutive in nature it can happen any draw can happen at any time. Okay. And so, it results in 0 0.2916 or 29.16 percent probability of having 3 goods and 1 defectives. You could do the same for d equal to 2 and d equal to 3 and finally, d equal to 4 and these probabilities come out to be uh, 4.86 percent, 0 0.3 percent, 0 0.36 percent and 0 0.01 percent respectively. So, we will kind of uh, round off this particular module and in the next module we will see how using combinations we could arrive at the same. Uh, probability just in a way I have shown the earlier example and after all these examples we will try to look at the distribution that is being made uh, and can we relate the combinatorial with the distribution. So, that we can bring out an overall uh, uh, you know way of representing the acceptance sampling methods in, 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 in terms of fraction good and fraction defectives. Uh, so, that uh, at one go you can do the calculation straight away and find out what is the overall probability in that particular uh, uh, case or situation. So, having said this we will uh, close this module and then in the next module uh, we will just wait on or, or we will discuss the remaining portion. Thank you.